Okay, hello, and thank you, Cheryl Himes, for being with us today. Look, I just ruined your introduction. <laughs> yourself. I just said your name. I'm going to let you share your name, um, what district you are, and your position. Okay, hi, I'm Cheryl Himes, like she said, and I am in Camdenton um, School District. My position is the K-12 ELA and Social Studies hi. Curriculum Coordinator. We have a math science person as well within our district. So I'm new to K-12 this year. I, I was the coordinator for K-5 and we, or K-6 and we expanded. So I'm learning those standards as we go. But. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to have you here and thank you. Cheryl is a willing participant to try to do this collaborative thing we're trying to do on the network where we're sharing great, just little tidbits of great practice that we think have gone really well. And I've gotten to know Cheryl from working with her um, on state uh, committees. And so I asked her to come today and to just share in response of what her district is doing to get their curriculum ready for the priority standards. So I'll give it to you, Cheryl. Okay, so thanks. We, um, five years ago, we started this whole process when the, um, the Missouri Learning Standards came out to begin with, and we chose our essential standards, and um, we um, decomposed them as a district, and, um, and then, of course, Desi came out with the item specs, um, so then we had that um, to go with us, but um, what we were finding is that our teachers were still struggling with the um, what those standards really meant and how to support our students the best way possible. Um, a lot of them were looking at the standard and the item specs and that was their point of entry with the, with the kids and not understanding that there were so many, especially in ELA, so many different components that the kids had to be able to do to be successful in order to be at that rigor of those standards, which are so deep as we know. Um, so this year, my K, well, really K-12 people started taking our essential standards and breaking down into um, learning progressions. And so those are by grade level. And we took our essential standards and um, thought about all the things that the kids needed to be able to do, skills and knowledge-based um, in order to be successful at the level of rigor for those standards. Um, things as simple as what is cause, what is, um, in fact, what, um, so the kids had to be able to show that they knew what the meaning of those words were, along with applying those skills as they go throughout the standard. Um, and then we would develop exit tickets that we wanted our students to be able to use. Those were common for um, our teachers. And then they could use that information and they talked about it in their PLC time. And um, just, determine, you know, um, where are your kids, what, um, if you did better, you know, those typical PLC conversations. So um, the teachers, another thing is that we wanted these to be embedded into their instruction and not be a stop and drop because we all know we feel like we're assessing kids to death and for them to be able to, you know, okay, it's another exit ticket and let's stop what we're doing or whatever. So we tried to do things like Reading, um, reading response journals as our exit ticket, and then they would pull those information that from um, the response journals or something that we have seesaw for our K2 um, kiddos. So um, it was a seesaw activity that they would, uh, would be doing. So it wasn't something that they would stop their instruction. It was, it supported their instruction. Um, and we're getting great feedback from the teachers that this has really been beneficial for them. Um, so that's pretty much in a nutshell what we, we've done with ELA and social studies. Now math is different because we have a program, so um, it's really written out for them. We, we have a district re, um, created curriculum based on Missouri learning standards, so we don't have an actual program that we use. Oh, I can't hear you, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry. So here's what I heard, Cheryl, and then I have a follow-up question. So okay. after you identified essential standards, you focused on looking at learning progressions and had teachers help you identify that. And then the next step was exit tickets, which rather than trying to do more assessments, you tried to embed those, which I love that approach, within instruction so it didn't feel like more assessing, um, that it could really help drive their instruction. 
And I loved how you mentioned the learning progressions really helped clarify maybe the entry point for the rigor and then how teachers could scaffold their students up to that. Um, one question I have that people might wonder, were there any books or resources? Um, what, you, what did you use to help develop the learning progressions? Um, we, well, my curriculum team did it, so they used um, their knowledge um, at that grade level. Um, we did use a few dis our states, so Delaware was one that we used and we looked at. Um, we also looked at, um, uh, I can't think of this, the district um, where they were, they were from, but we used a lot from, from that district as well. And then they were a common course, so of course we had to tweak them, but right. it gave us, it was easy for them to um, look at those and then get a, a a starting point and an understanding of what they needed. Um, and I can share those those districts that we used uh, or states that we used to help us develop those as well. Thank you. Well, I know, um, and Karen Hess, and so when, when we um, put our resource page, I'll put her too. There's just so many different philosophies on learning progressions and how they look. So that's why I asked the question. So I think that's a great takeaway um, that I've learned even in my own work with districts is you can look at other districts and things who have a similar format and kind of decide what type of template and so I love it that um, on this call again with our resources you're going to share at least a blank template so people can see um, a different approach so I think it's just important for people to know they can modify that however it would be useful um, and considering how you hyperlink other things that you want teachers to use to it um, so thank you for that question yeah um, we definitely wanted to make it fit our teachers and the teachers needs so um, they, we have them linked in our unit plans, but we wanted feedback from them, you know, to know exactly what they were wanting and where they are, um, where they felt um, they needed the most support, I guess. Perfect. And I think that's a key piece is always getting input and voice from your teachers. It makes it easier when you talk about how they're having this positive response now. Part of it is because they feel listened to. So I definitely think that is part of the process. So thank you for sharing your awesome practice with us today um, and for the resources. And we thank everybody for watching this video.